Thank you, Alec, and uh, good afternoon to everyone. And uh, thank you so much uh, for extending this invitation to come and talk to you at the eve uh, of an all important uh, elections um, in uh, South Africa since 1994, the period in 1994 when we all, all of us, most of us in South Africa, never thought we would one day see a peaceful transition to democracy, and it happened. So let's hope it happens again uh, this year, because uh, this year's elections are the most important uh, since 1994, because if we are going to continue having the, uh, this government in power, then our country's in real big trouble. Uh, but um, as South Africans, we're always uh, hopeful. Um, sitting here talking to you, standing here talking to you, as a politician, something that I never thought would really happen in my life because uh, Herman Mashaba, born on the 26th of August, is a full-blown capitalist. But all of a sudden, I'm, uh, I'm, I was stand here uh, talking to you as a politician, selling you political uh, ideas and values when I'm supposed to be selling you shampoos and conditioners. Something that I actually mastered and, and, I, and I enjoyed it. And, and people paid me handsomely, gave me the kind of uh, political freedom that I enjoy today. It is through my uh, capitalist uh, initiatives that I'm a free man today. I wasn't given freedom by anyone else. I was given freedom by my uh, capitalist initiatives, so, which I took that decision when I was 22 years old, when uh, P.W. Porter said to him and Mashaba, you're a black man, you can't go into business. And I said to Mr. P.W. Porter, you're most welcome to oppress uh, the 30 million South Africans at the time. But I said, not this man. And 1994 voted for Nelson Mandela. 1999 voted for Thabo Mbeki. And when I started seeing some cracks, um, political party that I voted for twice, political party in, before 1994, in the 80s, when at the time there was no white monopoly capital, as uh, black entrepreneurs and industrialists in the townships, uh, people relied on us uh, to assist them. And I uh, realized, my goodness, I was um, financially helping um, um, a criminal enterprise, uh, people with poli with um, policy ideas that I do not really subscribe to because I think I just really want to declare um, upfront uh, for me as a capitalist, um, to, if there's any socialist or a communist in this room, you and I are not friends. I think that let us really be really very clear about that because uh, I'm a free man as I am because of my um, economic policies, because the only way mankind can ever be free is through using his God-given talents, not what another man decides for him or for her. And that's the reason why I fell out uh, with the, the current uh, government, because uh, they we voted them into power, and then they wanted to take our rights uh, from us, uh, deciding for us... Uh, determined to make us as black people uh, poor, uneducated, and ignorant, and I rejected them. And um, ended up uh, being a politician, becoming the mayor of the city of Johannesburg. Three years into my mayoralty, unfortunately, the party I was representing and I um, um, lost each other. Lost each other because they uh, I misread them all. We, we misread each other because I wasn't in politics to save uh, political parties. Uh, I went into politics, firstly, uh, to unseat the ANC in the city of Johannesburg. There was an opportunity to unseat them, and I managed to unseat them in the first round. But I wasn't in politics to save political parties. I was in politics to save my country. Unfortunately, in the process in 2029, I discovered the ANC and my party DA planning to have a motion of no confidence against me because firstly, my scene was that um, I was uh, regarded as an, uh, as an EFF mayor because I was focusing my attention to poor people. I don't want to live side by side uh, 
uh, with poverty. I was learning, I was, I was born and raised in poverty, and I cannot want, I don't want to live in side by side with poverty. It's for that reason, I joined po uh, politics. And obviously for the, the ANC, they feared me because I was determined, and I'm still determined to see that uh, there are consequences for stealing public monies. I was re really after senior ANC people for fraud and corruption, 35 billion rands of fraud and corruption that I uncovered in the, in the three years as a mayor. So the two got together and decided um, I must be taken out. And uh, fortunate enough, I wasn't born yesterday. Get to know about uh, this plan, and uh, that's when I resigned. They thought I was uh, joking. I mean, being the mayor for me, it's the last, last job in the world I want. In fact, uh, this job I'm doing right now is the last job in the world I want. I hate uh, this job. It's a punishing job. It's not a job that you give it to someone you like. But but it's a job that someone has got to do. And it's a job that's very important because if we don't do it, then we end up like we are in this situation right now, where South Africa is governed by a criminal enterprise. And we sit back and we say, uh, politics is not for me. You know, that's really very sad about this South African situation where people would turn around and say, politics is not for me. And I'm telling you, you don't like politics, I can tell you your politics are gonna like you. Then when I come into your bedroom. So the only way to avoid the politics to have interest in politics. And fortunately enough, in all throughout my life, in studying at university, I studied politics. And I'm and I'm and I'm an avid reader of politics. I take interest in politics as a capitalist. Because if you don't really have the right to political climate. There's just no way of ever making an economy to work. No way you can build an economy in an environment of chaos. It's for that reason, personally, I'll, I've always taken politics seriously, and I'm doing right now. There's a reason I've actually left uh, the comfort of my family, and I'm paying, I'm paying the price. But it's a price worth fighting for, because uh, I don't want uh, this country to be another failed African country. There are countries that got independence before I was born, 64 years ago. They are going from one crisis after the other because uh, civil society says politics is not for them. So for politics, they are for me, and if not me, then who? Who else? And at that point, forming a political party in um, 29 29th of August 2020, right in the middle of COVID, because South Africans uh, called on me to form my own political party. And I uh, accepted it because I realized uh, God um, wanted me to do it because someone in my family tree, somewhere along the line, I don't know who, messed up big time and God decided I'm the one to pay the price on behalf of my family. And I'm embracing it. I don't know who in my family tree because this job, as I said, you give it to someone you don't like, someone who's really done something wrong. So I'm, I'm prepared to pay the price on behalf of my whoever in my family messed it up. But I think it's for a good cause. It's for a cause to really save my country. People are saying, Action SA, it's a small party. One thing that I want you as South Africans uh, to know, I was trained from day birth on the 26th of August 1959 by my grandfather and he taught me that lesson until he died in 1978. I'm not in this world to make friends. I'm not in this world to fail. Everything that I do, I do it to win. So for me to really be in politics, I'm not in politics because I'm working to be a, to be a member of parliament. To do what? To be in, in opposition. What can an opposition do in, in government? I'm not looking for a salary to really be in, in, in politics. I want to be in government to govern so that I can change uh, the course of history of my country. Fortunate enough, we contested the first elections during COVID, contested six municipalities out of 278. We are officially South Africa's sixth biggest political party. And that's something that people don't know. 
analysts and professors and the so-called clever people and polls which are run as propaganda. Ask them what they said about us uh, before to, uh, the local government election. They said if him and Mashaba Stockfell can get three councillors in the city of Johannesburg, they'll be lucky. We ended up in Johannesburg alone, 44 councillors. When they said uh, we'll be lucky to get three, we've got four. We are the third biggest political party in, uh, in, um, in Johannesburg. We've got just under 11% of Houting. Nine, pro nine municipalities. Out of nine municipalities, we contested only, uh, only three. But we are the, we are, we've got 11% of, of Houting. In just under a year during COVID, that we've now contested um, by nine by elections. And one thing that gives me great joy with the only political party you can do your homework. No political party in the history of this country has got the kind of electoral support that we've got. We've got support almost equal in all communities. Being Soweto, Alexander, Senten, Randbeck, Waterkloof, no political party in the history of this country has got the kind of support that you have. And it really gives me such joy because one of the core values of Action SA is to build an unracial South Africa that Mandela promised we'd do in 1994. It is for that reason, one of our policies is to do away. We are the first and only political party that says the ANC's triple B of 2003 must be buried and it must be buried in an un un unmarked grave because it's one of the most dangerous policies uh, that not only destroys our economy, it divides us along racial lines. And I can tell you, show me any, racial, any nation anywhere in the world that has ever succeeded when you divide your, your people. We all have to really be South Africans and, and fortunate enough for us as Action SA, we have to approve, not the polls that people run as propaganda. We've got evidence where you can check, uh, go into your website to go and look at our support uh, on the IEC website. We are now ready for 2024. 20, uh, we are now this time for the first time we are going to contest all nine provinces. All nine provinces. Yesterday, if you watch the news, I uh, announced the, what I call the uh, Team Fix South Africa. We are going to fix this country. Fix this country to, by ensuring that uh, we have um, the right economic policies, economic policies, where no union will ever have a veto right on our economic policies. If there's anyone coming from the union in, in this room, just really know that you're not a friend of Herman Mashaba or of XSA. You have the demo, you have a constitutional right to be here, but you'll never, no union will ever have a, uh, the, the right on, on our, the, uh, a veto right uh, on, on, on our policies. We want to ensure that we get the private sector, particularly SMMEs, we want to change uh, this draconian labor laws to make sure that uh, people uh, uh, invest in our country. Don't tell me about the minimum wage. What is minimum wage to, to 12 million South Africans? For me, it, over my, all those years, minimum wage is it's an evil system that punishes poor people, punishes uh, small businesses. Small, uh, if you look at anywhere in the world, Minimum wage benefits big business, it benefits uh, professional people. What about poor people with no real education? What about small businesses that wants to start? This coalition between big business and the unions under Action SA will, will stop. We will not allow that to really happen. We want to ensure that small businesses are given an opportunity to, uh, to employ those who want to work. People should not really be forced uh, to work um, uh, or getting government to tell me I must look after people who work for me. I've been an employer for over 40 years. Some of people have worked for me for over 30 years. I did not need uh, P.W. Botter at that time. I did not need Nelson Mandela, Tabo Mbeki, or now Cyril Ramaphosa to tell me I must look after my staff. That's a decision that I take as a, bus as a, bus as a business person. When it comes to education, 
you look at uh, what um, Satu, this is your trade union, it's, it's actually one of uh, the tragedies of, uh, of, of, of this uh, current government where they destroyed our education. Yesterday, our team um, fixed it, uh, Dr. Litlape, Jose Litlape, who yesterday announced uh, to head um, our education portfolio. You know, it is really very sad uh, to really listen to someone about uh, the, 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 the education in our country. I went into the boundary education uh, system. Today, 80% of public schools in this country are dysfunctional because of union intervention. No union in schools will have uh, a veto right. We are going to bring back, firstly, school, school principals under Action SA are going to be appointed by us as government. The only mandate we want is the community, which this principal is going to serve. And what we are going to do, we are going to bring back school inspectors. All these people that ANC has uh, the retired, these professional people, anyone under 75, if you're a professional, no, uh, we want to beg. I cannot see, and I don't want to live in a society where people retire. Why must people retire? We saw that you must go and die. So you can't tell me. Because the reti the retirement is basically to pray, prepare you to die. And I actually say, we are saying, no, people must not retire. Retire the day where you die and you're dead. Then you get an opportunity to sleep forever. So we want uh, professional people, uh, the 75, 80 years, please so be a school inspector. Go from one school to the other in the black communities. Go and make sure that school principals are doing what they're supposed to do. And we cannot allow, and I, find, I take serious exception to this myself as a Christian. Where, when I started school in 1966, every morning when I go to school, every morning before we go to class, the principal, the teachers and everyone, we go to assembly for 10, 15 minutes. We ask for God's blessing. This communists came into this country. 2% of uh, atheists, they stop us from praying. For us as Action SA, we say this is unacceptable. Under our government, from when a child starts school up to, to metric, every morning before they go to school, they, or to class, they must go and pray to God. We don't mind whether you're a Christian, you're a Muslim, you're a Jew, you're a, a Hindu, because all of us ultimately we believe in God. We cannot live with a society that has got no value. The community and the world that's only afraid of guns. No, I'm not afraid of guns, but I'm afraid of the higher power that must actually define who I am and really respect the other members of, of, of society. So I think this is just give you a sense. I brought a few copies of, of our policies. September last year, 12 to the 14, we assembled 600 of us from around the country where we designed the policies um, that we believe would really turn this country around. We fix it. That's why yesterday announced uh, a cabinet of, of uh, the, the 19 real professional South, South Africans. A poli the police will be led by the police. This, the health will be led by professional health professional. Uh, teaching will be uh, led by someone who to, who's a teacher. Not uh, these uh, decaders uh, that have never worked anywhere in their lives. The only thing that they know is to talk. That is, is going to come to an end. But that can only happen if the voters of this country give us the opportunity. They demonstrated this in the 2021 elections. And personally, I'll be disappointed if Action SA does not emerge as the second biggest political party in this country. Thank you very much for listening to me.